Thank you. However, it was a more substantial force, the walkway could be burned, preventing the enemy gaining access at all. There are many crannogs in Scotland, and several have been studied by archaeologists who have found charcoal along the line of the submerged walkways, showing that this tactic had been used on several occasions. When the Caledonian Canal was constructed, the water level was raised by two metres. This is causing waves to erode Cherry Island and it will one day sink into the loch. There has been a community living at this end of the loch since earliest recorded times. Following St. Columba's attempt to convert the northern Picts to Christianity, the area moved back and forth between pagan, believing he was under attack by an enormous force, immediately surrendered, and Stapleton's single regiment achieved a huge victory. The I can assure you that is not the Prime Minister's car waiting to go in through the gates. <laughs> He's a little bit more upmarket than that. <laughs> Name is Ender Kenny. And then to the left, number 24, uh, the birthplace of the Duke of Wellington. Remember he defeated Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo? So uh, number 24, the Duke of Wellington's birthplace, is uh, one of four uh, Georgian houses there on the left-hand side. And uh, the corner one, they're just putting the uh, signpost uh, on the doorway there. Uh, if you want a really nice and very expensive uh, restaurant, uh, that is restaurant Patrick Gibo. He's French. Uh, he's been in Dublin, I think, um, well, from my school days, practically. And that wasn't yesterday. And uh, so uh, he's, uh, it is Dublin's most prestigious restaurant. We have a lot of excellent restaurants in the city, uh, but that is uh, the one to go to when you win the lottery. I'll give you a photo opportunity uh, at uh, one of Dublin's most famous doors. And as we turn up here to the right now, this is a Georgian street, just little pockets of commercial uh, shops in it. And uh, as we turn here to the right, on the left where you see the flags, um, I always like to point out uh, this shop here. It's Ireland's leading gents outfitters on the left there, Louis Copeland and Son. And that's where Pat buys all his suits. Isn't that right, Pat? That's why he's always so beautifully attired here. <coughs> Now we're just going to pause here and uh, I'll point out this particular door on the right hand side, it's number 46. And uh, if you have a look at the other doors, while the colours are different, uh, the panelling is identical because those doors are original to the houses. 46 was replaced in 1904 
when King Edward VII came to pay a visit to Dublin, and uh, the king was invited to dinner in that house. And you know the way it is when you invite royalty, uh, the way you redecorate the whole house and do it up. Well, I do, and so does Pat, when we invite royalty. For some reason, they've never accepted the invitations. But for the king's visit, even the front door was changed. Now, look at all the other doors. The panelling's identical. And these doors would have been very sober colours originally. And um, I can imagine sort of the shock horror when uh, 46 was replaced with that. And um, I'm just making a guess that it was possibly um, new money that moved into 46. By the way, old money looks down their noses at new money. Right, so uh, I'm just wondering if Pat was going to let you off for a quick photo. And if you want to, uh, he will let you off to take photographs. To describe the accommodation in these houses on the square where we're just coming from, uh, Fitzwilliam Square, seven of those houses are private homes. Uh, otherwise, for the most part, they are mainly offices. And when we go around the corner to the right, uh, a number of the houses are used as uh, actually two uh, schools, two separate schools. So in the old days, the kitchens were down in the basement, and the main reception room set to one side of the front door, the downstairs dining room at the back, and uh, the two rooms could be connected by opening double doors between them. Over the front door, where you have a balcony, that was always the drawing room, overlooking the street or the park. And then on the two upper floors, the bedrooms were located. And you notice, looking towards the top of the house, are the windows are reduced in size. And this is used as an optical illusion, and to make you think the house is taller than it actually is. And uh, you notice further down here, uh, all the chimney pots, Every room had a bedroom. Every bedroom had a, a fireplace, and as I say, two schools along there on the right-hand side. Now we're going to uh, cut across onto St Stephen's Green, and this is the biggest of the Georgian squares. Also has the biggest houses. Look here on the left-hand side. This fine white stone building. On your left here was a former home of a member of the Guinness family, Lord Ivy. And today, Ivy House is our Department of Foreign Affairs. We apply there if we want to have an affair with a foreigner. <laughs> <laughs> haven't had any luck. I don't know about that. <laughs> you keep very quiet about that part of his life. <laughs> and then on the left, a very famous house on the left there, uh, which would have had a lot of visitors You're yesterday, down, yeah. Newman House the big uh, Georgian house on the left there. Newman House is where the Catholic University, as it then was, was founded by Cardinal Newman in 1854, and it's where James Joyce attended university. And he mentions his days as a student there in his book, A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. Now, just about every street we're driving through is mentioned in the work of James Joyce. He boasted that if the physical city of Dublin were demolished overnight, could be reproduced <coughs> from his work. <laughs> Modest man. <laughs> They're just uh, running in front of us there.
R L I N G. Yeah, see the little boys and girls there on there? Every small parish and community area in the country have a holy and get it. You're on now. This is the parlor. Next door is the dining room. Nice out there, isn't it? It is. It's fresh. It is fresh. You got your hat camera? Is it blink and red? are different because you just call them. You just call them and they come. Yeah. But this reminds me of the, um, the movie Babe. We saw that together. And it was a pig who was hurting.
That statue is the father of nature. He's the father of temperance. As they say, no city needed it more. <laughs> but there's a great little local poem by uh, people here in the city about Father Matthew. And they're the people up on the north side of the city. And in that caption, they say, the smell from Patrick's Bridge is wicked. The family then will be coming along with us. Um, and we'll be going across up to uh, up to Galway for a walk with Connor. Uh, he's your walking guide in Galway. And then across to Clan McNoise to the visitor centre there. It's a ruined monastic site. Interesting place. And, uh, and to Dublin. So those of you uh, make sure that you get your taxi or uh, <coughs> minibus transfer out of Bernadette Castle to Shannon Airport. Okay. Um, I have a list as well, but sometimes, I don't know for what reason, but sometimes maybe my list might be totally accurate. Um, and anyway, I don't really depend on that. I go by what you have been sold and what you paid for. Okay. Um, so, will you give a look at your pay, pay for work tonight uh, or this evening anytime? And you'll have an A4 sheet of paper saying that. And there's the bottom restaurant. You have to look. That, the uh, the bill the bill's pretty high right now. Okay, the bill the bill's high. Here comes Frank and Brenda. We don't. Here comes Frank. Packaged and all that under the shop rock composting. So you know your compost that you see in garden center. What I use it. Our hanging baskets and all. That's what we would use. Shannon compost. And it's sold in lots of countries around the world. Exported, you know. And uh, now they can. Stands amidst the meadows of the sons of Nosh in the heart of the Irish Midlands. People have been visiting this monastic site for nearly 1500 years. They came to pray to study, to teach, even to raid and murder. In Celtic times, the main east-west road 